All right, so today um, what we're going to do is now look at the largest social network ever. This is, uh, we're going to look at Facebook today. And you might have thought, well, why didn't we start with Facebook first? If it was so big, why are we waiting for it for the third day? Facebook has many considerations that we have to take into account when we want to be effective on Facebook. The big thing is that because Facebook is so big, unfortunately, you're going to be a a needle in a haystack. You're going to be trying, you're going to be vying um, to be found uh, compared to everyone else that is also trying to be found on Facebook and you're going to be not only the only um, realtor, the only web designer, the only uh, bakery, etc. Now Facebook, as I'm seeing here, I wanted to show my company's Facebook page, but now Facebook is becoming, is doing this apparently where I can't even see anything on Facebook unless I'm signed in. And I have to say, full disclosure from the beginning, Facebook, I don't like it. Facebook is not my favorite social network. It's not in the top 10, and there are more than 10 social networks. There's like 100. But Facebook, I don't like it. I don't like to use it for personal, like friends and family and such. I don't like it. But for business, I love it. For business, it works really well because we can reach such a diverse audience, or more importantly, a specific audience. It doesn't matter that we can have potentially a reach of a billion people. There's more than a billion people on Facebook. What matters is that we can reach the hundred or the thousand or the ten thousand that really matter to us. And because of many reasons I'm not a big fan of Facebook, this is just one of them. I would simply like to show you my company's Facebook page, but it won't even let me in until, I suppose, let's see if I type this in here, and yeah, I'm not logged in, so it's going to keep bothering me that I have to log in. I don't want to log in, I just want to show this off. And so you've all probably, it's, now that's popping up, that's new too. So um, you've probably heard of Facebook, you probably used Facebook, you probably have a Facebook account. But the thing is that, um, you have to be careful when you create a Facebook account, as we will see together, because what you want, most likely, for your business, is to have a Facebook page where you can gather likes, not friends. Friends are for personal, likes are for business. So if you've got a business page, quote-unquote, and you have friends, it's not set up properly. And technically, if you've got a Facebook page set up for friends, even though you're supposed to be a business, Technically, Facebook could shut it down because you're using it wrong. There's that terms of service that no one reads that ever, but everyone agrees to. Basically, you're going to use Facebook business pages for businesses on Facebook. And you're going to use Facebook personal profiles for personal profiles. So if your page, thinking it's your business, has friends, we've got to fix that right away. I'm not going to turn you in or anything, obviously, but you need to change it over to the right one. We'll see for various reasons why. We, why this even matters. We'll get to that eventually. But you've probably seen the Facebook, how, it, how it's set up. There's some customization that we can do, adding a cover graphic and a logo and such, and we can fill in about information and other stuff. We can add posts, just like every other social network. There's a lot related to every network out there. Because then you've got also the usual act interactions of likes, and comments and shares and everything. All the networks have them to different degrees and call them different things. And so a lot of what we've talked about on the previous networks still apply, but well, there will be new nuances that we talk about once we actually get into this. So how many of you um, currently have either a personal or business Facebook account? Okay, and how many of you have a business Facebook account? Okay, how many are you, of you are sure that you've got a business, a personal business? Okay, we'll see right now. Um, so, we want a vanity address like this, just like on Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, all of these networks have a way for you to uh, have this vanity name, this short name, this pretty name. Because by default, when we create a brand new Facebook business page, 
it'll most likely be a really long, ugly name, like facebook.com slash pages slash pmb slash 12589277. It's going to be gibberish, and that doesn't roll off the tongue. We want to have our pretty name like that, just like I've got it on Twitter and Google Plus and Vine and Snapchat, whatever. We're going to see that some of us will be constrained. Some of us will not be able to claim that name right away. Some of us will. It's one of the many things that I see inconsistent in Facebook. Even though they're such a big, powerful, profitable company, they're still rough around the edges thing, things and things being worked out all the time at our expense, I believe. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create an account. And basically what Facebook wants is that a person creates a business page. A person first creates a personal page and then a business page. You might say, I don't want a personal page. I want just a business page. Too bad. Facebook has this system set up and either we follow the rules or we don't play the game. So we want to create a personal account. You probably already have one. And then we want to create a business page. Very similar to Google+. But just like Google+, Plus, we don't need to use the personal one for anything. We don't need to put in what our high school was and our favorite book and what movie we watched. We don't need to do any of that personal stuff. But we need a personal account to log in to then create or manage a business page. So that's what we're going to do first. So I'm not going to go through the process of creating a Facebook account. You can do that on your own. I simply want you to log in with your personal account and again if you're not comfortable doing that in this public lab you can do it at home and rest assured I can create a personal account and then create or manage a dozen business accounts but my name Victor will not show up on any of those business pages in any way unless I choose to of course so my name won't show up let's say I'm doing a I'm doing a, a a Facebook page on, on one p particular political candidate and I'm doing it for their exact rival. I can do that. It's not going to show that Victor is attached to both of those and that I'm playing both, both ends of the field. I'm going to be able to manage both of those political campaigns on Facebook, but my name will never appear between them and nothing will cross-pollinate. So go ahead then and go to Facebook.com and you're going to sign in If you don't have an account, you'll have to take time to sign up, but I don't quite have time for that. So go ahead and sign in as your personal, and then I'll show you what you need to do to create the business account. Okay, so eventually you want to sign in. Obviously, like you're saying, I'm not a big fan. I haven't checked my notifications in a long time. <laughs> Don't care. So um, you're going to sign in. It's going to sign you into your personal account right away. Again, if you sign in and this is your business information, you probably don't have it set up right. You do need to have a personal account, and then I'll show you what you need to do for business. Depending on your set up then you might then need to convert the wrong kind of account into the right account or you can create a brand new uh, business account as we'll see how in a moment so hopefully there isn't anything that you don't want to you know put in public here but I'm signed into my personal account and on the very top right corner I'm sure this little thing has a name but do you see on the blue bar you have a little black triangle pointing down on the top most blue bar uh, if you click on that, I have this option, use Facebook as, and then a list of different companies, and other, and, and other companies I can further manage. If you don't have that, don't worry, just one moment, but this is how it's going to be. I set up this personal account, and I can then manage multiple Facebook business pages. And my information 
will not show up in those pages unless I choose to. And whatever I post here doesn't conflict with anything else. So you will be able to manage multiple businesses. There's probably a limit, but I don't think you're going to be managing 100 accounts, even 20 accounts. And here I've got several, obviously. So what I'm getting at is that at the top right corner, I'm going to be able to switch between my personal account and these various other business pages. And again, I use the terminology of business, but this doesn't have to be literally a business page. It could be a page for your nonprofit organization, a page for your band, a page for your local animal shelter. It can be a page for anything. They are very open. They are very lenient to have a page about anything, as long as you make it a page not a personal account. And so, if you don't have anything here that lets you switch between them back and forth, what we're going to do is need to go here to create a page. Because we've got Manage Pages, Create Pages. So show of hands here. When you log in and you click the black triangle, how many of you have at least one Facebook page here? Okay, but if you don't have that, you might have to figure out converting your pages, right? But what we're going to do, even if you possibly already have a Facebook page, you can choose to use it and apply what we're going to talk about, or you can create a new one, like, like I'm about to do in a moment. You can create a new one, understand the nuances of an account with, a, with nothing to lose, and then we will delete that page, and what you've learned, then you can apply it to your real page. That's something that you can decide to do. Use your existing page or create a new one. I'm going to create a new page here. So click on your triangle, create page. We have six general types of pages that I can create. Local business or place, company, organization, institution. The big difference between these two is that this one is tied to a physical location. So if I actually have a location on Main Street, it might be best to select local business because then that will put your location on a map. People are on Facebook all the time, all day long, and they have it in their pocket on their mobile device. So if they are looking for a nice local restaurant and they get on Facebook and search for you know, Italian food restaurants, it'll check nearby, and if your uh, local Italian food restaurant is on Facebook as a business, your page could show up for them, which will allow you to give you star ratings for your food, to check in, for you to gather data, for you to give promotions if someone is locally, local. So this really works best for a physical location. If you don't have one like a plumber, right, you go to people's houses, probably a company will work. A brand or product, you can make technically a Facebook page for every one of your products. I think that's way too cumbersome and over the top. But think about this. There's a Facebook page for Coca-Cola, and there's a Facebook page for Sprite, and there's a Facebook page for 7-Up, and all of those come from the exact same company. But each one of those has its own brand page. That's something that you can do as well. You can make a page for an artist, band, or public figure, so it's more of a person here. That's good. Whatever public figure means, that's not set in stone. Anything related to entertainment, so books or TV and such, or cause or community. You do get different features depending on these different ones, so obviously I can't explain every feature because I can only select one, but I'm happy to help during lab time and such. So I'm going to go with company, organization, or institute. I've got various categories. Hopefully your business fits into one of these as best as possible. So I'm going to make up the fictional Victor's Bakery. I have food and beverages right there. So try to pick a category where your business best fits into. Then we've got company name, 
very similar to over on Google Plus or Facebook. Um, we have this name, I'm sorry, Google Plus or Twitter. We have this name that is going to be visible on our page, but this name here is not the address. Remember, I showed up here, facebook.com slash pmdinteractive. That address, I can pick it elsewhere. This is the name that's going to appear in the main visible area of the page. So I can have spaces and punctuation, characters and such. So I would write this um, name here as the name of your business and spell it properly and everything. On another screen, we'll be able to choose an address. And some of you might be able to choose that address actually from this screen very soon. Some of you will not be able to. Yes? Uh, I created the page, but it's forcing me to put a lowercase for my T right now in the corner. The mm -hmm. uh, M and the C are both capitalized, and where that C in between them is lowercase. Now it's forcing me, and last week I did a um, request to Facebook to change the name, and they said they did. So now I, instead of all pick anything technology with that lowercase T, it's now there with the uppercase, but it's still. Well, if you already have a page and they already fixed it, you might not really want to create another one to take over it. Well, I was trying to rebrand myself with the same username for all my different accounts. And so, um, well, I think this is going to be another example. Let's talk during the break because, again, your, yours is particularly specific, so let's wait for that. So here, I'm going to choose my company name. I'm going to choose Get Started. After this point, you might have two or three or four or five little items you need to do. It's going to depend on various factors. So if yours looks very different, you can ask me. But if they make sense, we're going to fill these out. Yes? I'll have them for you. What's that? I did business also. Uh -huh. yours, but I don't have add to favorites. Okay, about add to favorites, don't even worry about that one. On that one, I don't even recommend it. So if you don't get add to favorites, don't worry. I'll explain what that is in a moment. We've got about. Add a description and website to improve the ranking of your page in search. Because SEO, search engine optimization, is uh, the techniques that you need to do to get your website to find to, to be found in search. That is Google search, Bing search, Yahoo search, you know, AOL search, a search engine. But Facebook is so big that people can spend all their time just in Facebook, not even going to outside of Facebook to other websites. Because on Facebook you can look at pictures, you can look at video, you can play games, you can chat with your friends and family. Why would you go to a website? Facebook knows this and loves it, and Google knows this and fears this. So with one and a half billion users on Facebook, that's one of the reasons why Fa uh, Google created Google+. It's seeing that so many people are spending so much time on Facebook, which could eat away at their market share for search, Google said, let's create Google+. Let's make our own social network to have people spend time here. Because all of these companies, you know, if you think of a company like Coca-Cola or Nike or Starbucks, they have a product, they have a physical thing that you can buy and monetize. These companies, Google and Twitter and Facebook, these companies don't really create a physical thing. So the way they make their money is through the use of their service by advertisements and such. So what this is saying is you will be one of many websites or many presences on Facebook, they're going to need to be found as well. You're going to be in the haystack. It's giving us opportunity here to write a paragraph about what our company is. And if you take my SEO class, we talk about, always think about writing this about information with keywords in mind. Keywords about what your business is, who you're trying to attract, because there's this search box right here that only searches Facebook. It doesn't reach out to the rest of the web. Only to Facebook's little piece of the web. And even though it has one and a half billion users, there's still a, you know, a few billion others elsewhere. 
So here, think about, and you have 155 characters, so just about a tweet. You have 155 characters to write what your business is and add some keywords so that when someone searches, hopefully you get found. But don't literally just put in keywords. You want to put real, human-readable sentences. So let's say I've got Victor's Bakery. Family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake, California. Since 1881. Sure. We specialize in healthy versions of your favorite treats. So I would try to use as much of the space as I can. This is obviously what I'm going for, which is dense. It's mentioning the keyword bakery, a location, healthy, and I'm writing it in a real kind of sentence. This is going to be edited, of course, later. If you've already got a website, a Facebook page right now, and you want to edit this, we'll get to that. But if you're creating one like me, you want to write something here, and if, you don't, if you're not inspired, uh, you can come back to it later. Don't worry. If you've got a website, notice here, add your website or Twitter or other social media. So if you also want to advertise your other social media networks, you can put in an address there, but only one. One at a time, I believe. So I would put in my address here if I had a website. Because all of this social media, as we've talked about before, is a form of marketing, advertising to get people you know, out of Twitter, out of Facebook, and over to your website where you can sell them a product, have them sign up or donate, simply read your blog posts, see your paintings, whatever. That's where we have the most control, on our website. So we're going to be marketing on these platforms, but we're still usually going to drive them back to the website where we complete our, have them complete our goal. Save that info. I have this. Uh, it says choose a unique Facebook photograph. Cool. You you are one of the luckier ones that right away perhaps here also has you has you choose your unique Facebook address, which is, at the moment, mine has this weird address, facebook.com slash pages 7485, whatever. If it lets you choose one, possibly you, you would, but again, before you choose it, think about, is this page that we're creating going to be your real page, or are we simply learning this? Because if this is just for testing, don't choose that name, because now you've taken it away from yourself when you really want to use it. And I believe they don't let you change it very easily. I've had to deal with that, so maybe don't claim it right now unless this is legitimate, and later on we can add it. Not a big deal. But the description that could be changed down the road? All of this, yeah, all of this can be changed down the road, too. Yes? So, you tell me that my address is changing, so I try mm -hmm. mixing it up instead of even if I had an alphanumeric, even if I had an alphanumeric character. You mean, is it asking for your address of Facebook or your address of your website? Down here at the bottom where you're pulling it out, I'm wondering to put in alltechsd.com, which is my website. But it's taken, but it's still all part of this um, rebranding I'm doing with the original with the all tech imaging technology. What I'm filling in right here is asking for a website. So if you don't put in a website address, it won't work. Well, I do put it in and it conflicts. It says that that's already taken. Yeah. But it's taken by me. Exactly. That's why it's not going to let you, because it's already taken. So this is what I was saying earlier. If you're trying to do this again, but you've already got a page existing, there's a little conflict there. So maybe just um, for these purposes right now, just make up a completely different address, and then we can delete it later or edit it later, and then we can fix your existing one when we get to the break.
So I'm going to fill in something here and I will save that info. It's going to ask me for a profile picture which I can upload or import from a website. I don't have one of these handy, but you do want to fill that in as soon as you can because again you don't want to be the generic white flag. You don't want to be this generic icon throughout Facebook. You want to have your logo, which is part of your branding, and you want it consistent. This particular picture that you'll add at some point is going to be viewed, is going to be showed, it's going to be shown in a variety of sizes. It can be as tiny as this right here. So notice how small these logos are. My face isn't even uh, visible here. This logo is much better, but your icon will be shown in different sizes on the desktop, on a laptop, on a mobile device. So I see this so many times that someone creates a Facebook page, they bring in their company logo that they've had for 20 years, but it's a very wide logo, and this is a square shape, so it's going to cut it off. So think in terms of this is a square shape. If your original logo is rectangular, you're going to need to use some sort of graphics software to fix that. You have to put a square shape here. Most social networks require a square logo. Even if yours is rectangular, there's ways to, to make it square so that it doesn't cut it off or distort it. That's something that you would do in a graphic software. Don't have time to talk about that exactly, but you should look into it. I don't have my profile picture to use, so I have to skip it for the moment. And then here it uh, says Add to Favorites. If you don't have Add to Favorites, don't worry. I, don't, I never even do this. What this is saying is, when you log in to your personal account, at the left side, on the left column, there's a column item there that says Favorites. We, for you to quickly jump to messages or events or whatever is there on your left, Candy Crush, whatever. So it says add your brand new page to your favorites so you can reach it quickly. Um, I don't do this, and I don't know if they fixed it, but in the old days, you know, a year ago or whatever, um, this caused me a lot of problems. Putting my page into my favorites here caused me problems in that I clicked on the page thinking that I'm editing the page as myself, as the business. And what I ended up doing was editing the page as myself, as Victor. And like I said, I don't want the, my name Victor to appear on those pages. I want my company name to appear on my company. And it's happened once or twice for me, and that was enough that I never bothered with this. I don't know if they fixed it. I don't care. I'm going to show you a better way to make sure that you're posting as your business to your business. Because it's happened to me both ways that I'm my business and I'm posting in my personal. That's embarrassing. And it's also bad that I'm a person and I'm posting to the business instead of the business. That's embarrassing. So I'll show you a way after my mistakes here and there how to make sure you're doing it right. So if you get this, don't even bother. Don't even put it there. That's how I know for me it caused me problems. I don't know if they fixed it. I'm going to skip it. This is one of the reasons why you might want to create a page new, if especially if you don't have much going on in your existing one, because this pops up here, your preferred page audience. If you already have a page, I, I, we should be able to access it from another screen, but I have seen for some people that come to my class here that they have an existing page and they can't get to this option because they created it a year ago. And I have seen some people that created their page a year ago and are able to get to the screen. I don't know why it's inconsistent, but if you're creating a brand new page, it should let you do this, which is how you're going to stand out. You're a needle in a haystack. How are you going to stand out? You're going to target your page to specific audience, and we can edit this later, and we'll see how powerful this is later because there's one and a half billion people on Facebook. And even if we narrow it down to only USA, that's still, you know, hundreds of millions of people using Facebook. Even if we narrow it down to San Diego, that's thousands or millions of people. We're not going to stand out unless we target. So here it's asking location. 
everyone in this location, and there's a couple of ways to choose it. Everyone in this location, people who live in this location, people recently in this location, people traveling. This is very powerful. Every time you log into Facebook and it's asking, what are you up to today? How do you feel today? And all of these things that people are answering so, uh, so easily, Facebook is collecting all of that. When you posted that selfie at the Grand Canyon and tagged yourself at the Grand Canyon, Facebook knows you were at the Grand Canyon. And on a personal level, a lot, of, a lot of what Facebook does, I don't like it. On a business level, I love it, though. I want to know, if I've got a business in San Diego, I want to know to target my page to people that live here. Or I want to know to target it to the people that are visiting here. They're normally in Washington State, and they left you know, rainy Washington State to visit sunny San Diego. This will tell me, this will target my page to those people, people that have traveled here. How do they know? How does Facebook know they travel here? We give away our information so easily nowadays. So Facebook knows it. Many websites know it. For the moment, I'm going to say everyone. We can target specifically better a little later. And so then I'm saying, okay, include or exclude countries, states, cities, zip codes. So I can say. San Diego. It'll say, do you mean San Diego, South San Diego, San Diego County, Rancho San Diego, San Diego, Texas? No, it means San Diego, California. And yes, you can add more than one target location, but again, if you're trying to target too many, you're not going to reach an audience. So don't put San Diego and La Jolla and Chula Vista, and Imperial Beach, it's all in the same 25-mile radius. Notice you can change your radius. It's going to target everyone, even the seagulls over here. So all of this is a little bit out of Escondido range, and definitely Oceanside. You can increase the radius or add the other city that is out of the radius. We'll be reaching some people in Tijuana also. If you want it to be very specific, it can go down to 10 miles. <clears throat> 50 miles. So what if you work out of the country as well? You can put, you can add another one, sure. If you're international, that's a little harder for me to answer. Yeah. Um, but if you're, tar again, you might be international, but are you really international? Are you selling in Afghanistan? So if you are targeting larger audiences internationally, it might be a good idea still to put in large metropolitan areas. You know, I'm putting in San Diego and Tokyo, uh, which would encompass Japan. That sort of thing. Yes? This circle changes by changing this item right here, 25 miles, larger or smaller, 10, 10 miles minimum, 50 miles maximum. Yes. Why did you see that was better than saying San Diego National City, Oklahoma? If, you, if I select uh, Chula Vista, it's already within the radius. You're not getting any extra targeting from adding locations that are already within that radius. Um, I don't think it's detrimental, like that you get knocked down or whatever, but it's 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 a waste because if I if I've got this radius of 25 miles, it's encompassing those things that I'm trying to still target. If I have it short down to 10, I'm seeing here that Imperial Beach is not quite getting targeted, perhaps, or El Cajon. So maybe at that point I would al add El Cajon, and then I've got these two targets. If I do have a lot of locations, it looks like I can add bulk locations. And we've got age. You can go be here it says between 18 and 65, but actually you can go as young as 13. And technically you have to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook. If you've got you know, grandkids and such that are nine years old on Facebook, I'm going to tell on you because they're not supposed to be there. 13 years old, 
handled on the continent. So here again, uh, are, are, do you want to target everyone, quote unquote, 18 to 65? Or is your product really focused on a specific demographic? You know, let's say I'm a financial services, and perhaps it's most important for people 40 to 65. Great, target that. And this can still be changed on a per case basis. This will apply in general for your whole page, and when we get specific about specific posts, we're going to see that we can target specific posts to specific audiences, which is great. Right here, choose whatever makes sense, age and gender. If my product really is focused on men, then focus it to men, or women, or both, depending. Yes? It's up to you. If your company is not going to target south of the border, then it's fine. It's a good move then not to, so that then, you know, you're not wasting any time with leads that you're not going to follow up on. Then we've got interests, which these are amazing also. Again, every time you log in and it asks you, how are you feeling today? What did you watch today? And people fill that in? These are interests that are coming up, because you can like so many things on Facebook. Uh, what, what these likes are is a huge database of, of people's interests. And for us as marketers, that matters, because if my interest is, you know, cookies, I can find that millions of people like cookies in San Diego, so my product could reach them. If you don't know what to fill in here yet, if you simply click on the box, which is the same as clicking on Browse, it pops up these general categories, and let's say if I hover over business, this could reach about only one billion people. People who have expressed an interest in or like pages related to business and industry. So here I could target, this doesn't also take into account your other things you've done up there. This is just everyone on Facebook who has ever clicked a like on a business-related thing, which is a billion people. Entertainment is 1.3 billion. Family and relationships, uh, if we just look at that number, is funny because people care about family and relationships less than entertainment. Mm. Fitness and health, and people care about that even less. But food and drink, more than that. So what this is, general categories, which then you can... If you add the category of business and industry, inside of it you've got advertising and agriculture. And if you actually want to add, if you want to sub-specify, you can click its name or triangle. And if you actually want to add it, you click the plus sign. But I wouldn't add something so huge as those big categories. I would get specific. So I've got Victor's Bakery. Let's see what works. Food and drink. I'm going to open food and drink. Alcoholic beverages, beverages, cooking, cuisine, food, restaurants, let's see, cooking, baking. Yeah, 129 million people. So I will add baking. Maybe recipes, that's another 200 million. And yes, I can add lots and lots and lots of categories here, but be careful about adding so many categories that you, you lose your specificity you lose an audience. When you try to please everyone, you don't please anyone. When you're trying to please anyone, you don't please everyone. So here I've chosen two, baking and recipes, and those were you know, about 400 million potential people that I could reach on Facebook, which does not take into account the city and ages and gender that I set. So on this one, I would say five is a good amount of interests. I could even push it to ten, but five is a good one to shoot for. Uh, I can edit this later, so I'm going to move on, but any questions on this screen? You can come back to this later if you need to, or if you don't have this to look at right now, I'll show you where it is in a moment. Save that.
we have a, I have a brand new page. I'm getting a little bit of a, a quick tour, getting around. Everything you need to manage your pages in these tabs. Page, message, notifications, publish. We'll look at those. Um, it says then also next. I have zero likes to my page at the moment. So it says why not like your own page to show you've got at least one like. Popularity breeds popularity. So if people see that you've got 10 likes on your page, they might give a few more likes. If, they, if you've got 100 likes on your page, someone else might like it. If you've got zero likes on your page, you might not entice people to like you. I'll explain why like might be useful soon, but I'll say, yeah, I'll like my own page. So I've created a page. I've got a bunch of things to look at here. Any questions so far? The first thing I want to address is this thing that I said. Am I editing my personal account or am I editing my business account? You tell me, just by looking at my screen here. Which of the two am I editing? My personal account or my business account? My name is right here, not my business name. It looks like I might be editing my business page because it's right in front of me and I can add something here. But look on the top right corner and my personal name is there. Not my business name. And supposedly Facebook has an option that's supposed to fix that so that you're posting as the right account. I don't trust it, so I'll show you the way that I would tell you to make sure. Let's do it like this. Go ahead and completely close this web browser and let's open a different web browser just to show you you know when you go home I was in Google Chrome I'm gonna go to Firefox if you were in Internet Explorer go to Safari whatever whatever browser you were in close it and let's open a different browser just to show you the most pure way without history I went to a completely different browser. I was in Chrome, and now I'm in Firefox. Let's go back to Facebook.com and sign in. This is just the most obvious way to show you what I want to show you. After you know this, you don't have to switch browsers, but I just want to make sure this is obvious. Because you're going to go home, you're going to want to do this, and you might do it wrong. You might do this on your personal page. You're going to say, what was that extra secret thing I needed to do? I'm going to show you. So sign in again. I signed in. I'm in my personal account because my name is right there. <coughs> and my picture. Here's the sidebar of your favorites. Again, if you added your page to your favorites, you'd be able to jump to your page right away, but I don't trust it that it will let me edit my page as my page. This is the way that I would recommend to make sure you're on a page as the page, not as a person. My name's right there. The little black triangle. Click on that, and you're gonna see right there, perhaps your page. If you don't see it, you can click See More. This shows all my pages and I have Login. This is the way to guarantee that you're editing the page as the page. You go to that triangle and you switch to the account up there. If you click on your page over here, that I don't trust that that did what I wanted to do. That'll simply show you your page and you'll still be yourself and you'll be trying to post to your page as Victor instead of Victor's Bakery by going up to the triangle and selecting it there. Use Facebook as PNP Interactive. For me, that I've got too many to manage, I click on See More or Manage Pages, and they'll be listed here, and I click Login. That's the way that I know for sure that I'm doing what I'm expecting. So, Victor's Bakery, which I just created, I'm going to click Log In. And now, on the top right corner, it has 
the name of my business, not my personal name. It's my business. I'm using the business as myself, and it even told me someone named Victor Campos just liked my page. So I'm using it as the business, as I'm supposed to. Did everyone get that? Is everyone editing your page as your page? Ron still says he would be Ferguson no matter which screen. But my pictures and everything are on the same page. Let me take a quick look at that. It is a little odd uh, sometimes for some people. And usually for me, what happens is I just switch back and forth between them a couple of times and then it wakes up. Yeah. Sometimes that's to take that to the home page. Okay. Thank you. I had a question about these accounts, how they link together. I hope it's not off a part. I can always take it offline if there is one. I did a donation to GoFundMe, mm -hmm. and I did it through All Tech Business page. But when it wants me to, to choose a, a you know, to upload my profile pic so that people can see, that's in somewhere. Again, that's a very specific thing to you. Let me help you during the Okay, so um, at this point, uh, we have an account, and we know the difference between switching accounts. And for some of you, it did do these weird little hiccups that I see sometimes. So uh, if it's not behaving how you want, it's worked for me to click on the little Facebook home button a few times and then try to switch back and forth a few times here just to go back and forth and that sometimes wakes it up. So if that works for you, good. So then here we've got a page and then we have the same conundrum that we have on the other networks. Do I want to get followers first? But if I have at this point nothing to show for it, I might not get followers. Okay, well what if I start publishing stuff but I have no followers so no one will see it? I'm going to recommend again, like we've done for the different networks, complete the profile and add some content. Yes, we're publishing it to no one. We have no followers. But then you have something to show for once we try to get followers. So mine, because it's brand new, it tells me add a profile picture, this square logo here. I want to add it at some point. Add a cover photo, which is this graphic back here, for more branding. Add contact info. We'll see that in a moment. But that's if you want people to contact you, you might get good business results from people on Facebook. Yes? What's the size of the photo? I have to look it up, but it's probably around 900 by 300 or so. Um, and we can look that up uh, up on the help. You know, I can go into help, and somewhere there it'll tell me the exact dimensions. But it's about 900 or so by 300. So the smaller one's about like 100 by 100? That one seems about, yeah, one, <laughs> 150 by 150 or so. Yes. Hey, so when we created a page, you know, you have those sections local versus employee, company, organization, or institution. Yes. And we, we started with a company, organization. My business category is not there. However, it's on the local business <laughs> We can change this. 
we'll see where in a moment really the local business is going to be if you have a local business if you have a if you have a place for people to go to and give you ratings and such because if you set this up let's say I use a PO box well if a person actually follows the GPS and it's a PO box not a real business they have the ability to then give you one star to complain because it's not a real business yeah. Sounds like it. Yes. So, let's look at, um, in general, some of the anatomy of this, and then we'll get into specifics. Uh, first thing you want to get comfortable with is seeing this menu on the top left in this white bar. You've got page, messages, notifications, publishing tools. Page, whenever you want to get back to this home page of your page, it looks like this. This is what it will look like for people basically when they visit you. Mine's very basic, so not so good. But notice also the address bar. At the moment, because I created this page, my address on Facebook is facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery 74083 gibberish. I want simply facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. I'll show you where to edit that in a moment. But by default, everyone gets that one. Some of you got the opportunity when creating the page to choose that name, which you might want to. And if you've had your Facebook for a year and you never noticed this, this is not a very good address that's memorable and shareable. So I'll show you where to edit, the, to edit that soon. Take a quick look at Messages screen. Messages is the place where you can get private messages sent to your business. There's a value to this in that this can be a form of customer service. Facebook gives you this system for free and people can then send a message to your page that only you would see so that you can answer and get that issue resolved or to do some direct marketing and such. Yes? Do you have to be on Victor's Bakery to get these messages? Like, let's say you're on a personal account, would it let you know that you have messages on your Victor's Bakery account? I believe it will. It'll show you the global notifications there. And, um, but to actually edit them, you do have to be on your page. Mm -hmm. It'll show you notifications, and I believe if you click on it, it'll then take you here. But um, because you can have multiple pages, it'll get very cumbersome. There's not one unified inbox. Yeah. Each has an inbox per page. So these might be useful, or you might not want this. I believe by default, automatically, anyone can send you a direct message. I might not want that. We'll see how to turn that off in a moment. Notifications. At the top right corner, we've seen these friend requests and messages and general notifications. But when you're in your page, when you're editing your page, you also have a separate notifications screen where you can get here information about everything that's happening with your page. So this is set to currently all notifications. My notifications. I can say show me my likes. Show me any shares of my content. Show me other activity or requests that have happened regarding my page. You might even then see invite here. Since you've got a brand new page with no likes, no followers basically, you might want to suggest your page to other people. But before that, how many times have you ignored a request from friends on Facebook? They will do the same thing to you probably. Not out of spite. Not out of spite, simply because there's too much to do. And I don't like your page about that political candidate, so why would I like it? Right? So. Are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Probably not. It doesn't hurt to, to send the invite to them, but really, is, is uh, Melanie really going to care about this particular business? Is Patricia? Is Bobby? Is Yalila? I, I don't know. It doesn't hurt to invite them, but don't feel snubbed if they never <laughs> give you a like. We're going to build our likes on other customers, because again, this is for customers and clients. Are you going to turn your friends and family into clients and customers? Probably not, but you could. 
you might see this thing about promotion and such. We'll talk about that later. That's notifications. Publishing tools. This can show you a list of everything that you've published, so everything that you've shared. We'll look at what's cool is we, we can work with scheduled posts. So if you're going to run social media well, you're going to be posting at least once a week, maybe multiple times a week or day. Well, I don't want to be chained to my computer every day doing Facebook. I'm running my business. We'll see that we can schedule posts. We can um, spend a few hours on a Friday and set up one post per week. So I don't have to log back in and every week add something, add something, add something. I can schedule it so that it automatically posts. I can start an amazing post and say I've got to do something else, I'll be back. We can save it as a draft. We can come back to our drafts. And this is very cool, this is recent, I, li I like this. We've had in our various companies promotions. We publish a promotion and it says this weekend only, 10% off. And so then the, co the client gets some sales surge this weekend. But if we don't remember to turn off that promotion, it'll still be there next week and next week and next year. So someone a year later might come into the store and say, I'm trying to use this 10% off. Sir, that expired a year ago, but it's still on your Facebook because I never took it off. Expiring posts fixes that. I can set a post that will expire in three days and then it goes away. I don't have any trouble with people trying to use an old post of ours. Yes. Can you do that as you create it? Yeah, and we'll see as you create it or afterward. It, it, it will let you do it after, but I would usually do it when I'm creating it. I have the idea already. Any videos that I create will be listed here and also leads, ads, forms. So I can have forms, not forums, but forms where I can get feedback. And once you've got this set up and have used it enough time, you will then eventually have a tab called Insights. If you've had your page already existing for a while, you might have an Insights tab. I'll show you what one looks like a little later. This is brand new. But Insights is another highly important screen in Facebook because this will tell you so much information about your, your users. Ages and genders and times of day that is most popular and what was effective and what wasn't. Because people ask, what's the best time to post on Facebook? or Twitter or whatever. And then you're going to find plenty of articles out there that will tell you that. But really, it's going to depend on your target audience. As you post, as you try to post something once a week, twice a week, and you vary your times, you're going to find out the best time when people, your audience is active. So I can't tell you, don't forget to post Friday at 9 a.m. I don't know. It depends on your business. But with the insights, it'll be able to tell us. And we'll know that once our page is old enough and has gathered some traffic. We have a help button. I highly recommend you look into that screen. There's a lot of help data files to read and tutorials and such. And then there's the community. Send feedback to try to get some help from a real person. Facebook does have real customer support. It's via email and it does work, although it's a bit slow. But I have contacted them via their tech support and they do answer the question and fix the issue. It takes a little while sometimes. That's over in the help section. And now let's jump into settings. Lots of settings to look at. We'll pick out some important ones that I recommend you look at. I'm in the Settings tab under the General Settings. If you want to take your page offline temporarily, you can unpublish it. Right now it's live. Everyone can see it, in theory. If you don't want everyone to see it yet, you can click Edit and change that to uh, hidden or unpublish, so that no one will see it until you let them see it. At the moment, our Facebook page is like, you know, the um, 
the what do you call those the the main street town circle you know where people anyone can congregate and, and and talk and such so at the moment our Facebook page is very open meaning that any crazy person can write any crazy thing on our Facebook by default well we've got these options to change that right here visitor posts click edit and it says allow visitors to to the page to publish posts or disable posts by other people so would you like any crazy person to write any crazy thing yes or no but assuming I, you're assuming that pa crazy people will write any crazy thing I wouldn't recommend that you say disallow because then that shuts down the conversation that then creates a monologue on social media rather than a dialogue dialogue is multiple people talking about something and a monologue is one person talking to you you can run social media either way monologue or dialogue successfully either way but I recommend and the way we do it for our clients is the dialogue we post something and we reply to someone if they reply to us we start a conversation because that's how you build a sale you you have this personal rapport so to disallow anyone writing anything nice on your website is not good. To disallow anyone writing anything bad is not good. But I would recommend leave it on allow visitors to post, but review posts by others before they are published. Moderate it. And that's off by default. And so I highly recommend let people post, let any crazy person write anything, but it will not show up until you approve it. I probably won't approve it. So turn that on. Is that, a picture, is that a feature on the personal page too, or just business? There's a version of that somewhere in the settings, yes. The answer to that is don't be connected to crazy people on your personal Facebook. Does it just send you a notification that someone posted? Yeah. You will get an email, I believe, but definitely you'll get a little red number up on top here that tells you something is new. And you're going to see that also in notifications here. So they will definitely tell you there's a brand new comment. Approve it or not. Would you like people to post videos or, or photos as well, or just text? If you only want text, turn that off. But again, dialogue. Think about it in terms of again inspiration about what the competition is doing the big companies spend millions of dollars in marketing modern marketing is social media so the big companies have hey everyone share your 10 second video on why you love McDonald's for a free hamburger and then a thousand people respond only one person is gonna win the burger but we got a thousand active people so are you gonna let them only post text or also photos and video if you let photos and video remember you're gonna you're gonna approve it so that's good. Um, Facebook is one of the best places to really control your message because if you post something on Twitter and try to start a, a hashtag or a trend, it can get away from you and then your hashtag gets co-opted and it goes negative. And you can't do anything about anyone else's tweets. But on your Facebook, it's your property to some degree and when someone writes something negative, you can either say, look, it doesn't show up or you can delete it. You can control other people's messages and posts on your page. You do have that ability. Save that. Newsfeed audience and visibility for posts. When we created the page and it asked us for an audience, I chose 40 to 65 year olds. But maybe I'm going to create a post that I really want to target, that one post, I really want to target it to 18 to 30 year olds. At the moment, I cannot do that. My posts, all my posts, are being targeted to that demographic I set up earlier. If I turn this on, the ability to narrow the potential audience for new suites for what I post is, is turned off. If you want to target your posts on a case-by-case -case basis, this is a good idea to turn on. If you click edit, you'll say yes. You'll get a simple little selector option below each new post, and then you'll be able to change your demographics per post. Not everyone needs this, but if you need to, that might be useful. It doesn't hurt to leave it on, and you might not ever use it. That's fine.
expiring posts. The ability to set posts that expire is turned off for my page. I want that because I've got a business where I'm putting out promotions that don't last forever. They last for a few days. You may not need that or want that, but if you turn it on, you don't have to use it, and it'll be handy there if you ever need it. I would, I would turn on expiring posts if you think you'll need it. Save it. Any person can send you a private message, legitimate or not. If you don't want that ability, there's messages. That's really up to you for you to decide. You may think the other ones are, are good enough, and they could be. You might not accept any private messages, but that's going to limit a real customer that really wants to get in touch with you because they have a problem with your product or want to give you some great feedback, which you can use as a testimonial. So that's up to you. I would leave it on, but if you don't want to deal with that, you can turn it off. Um, other things are pretty self-explanatory. What else to mention? Profanity filter is off. Anyone can write what, whatever the F they want. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want that, you can turn that on and you can limit it in different ways. You can limit it in different ways, although it notice it says profanity, medium, or strong. What does that mean? Facebook determines what to block by using the most commonly reported words and phrases marked offensive by the community. So the people of Facebook, they mark something offensive, and then that creates the algorithm to then remove the profanity. I, I'm not exactly sure how it works, if it removes the whole post or just bleeps out that text or what. Uh, I usually don't have this on because we, we have the moderation turned on up here, so we can deal with it that way. Comments. People will be able to comment on the page or posts. How would you like those to be shown? See most relevant. So by default is that Janet comments yesterday and John comments today, so his post is higher. And then Bill comments, so his is higher and Janet's is lower. But if you turn this on, and Janet's post got a lot of activity, Janet's comment got a lot of activity, positive activity, you can have Janet's post higher than Bill's. Because we're saying here, elevate the ones that have the most positive activity. So again, creating a, an environment where, of, of good comments and positivity and interaction. Here's this merged duplicate page that not everyone needs, but if you've got multiple pages that are conflicting with each other, you can merge them right here. And then if you want to give up on all of this, you have delete page. Again, if you created, if you created this um, just you know testing page and you want to remove it at the end of the day there's delete the page that doesn't delete your whole Facebook account only this page um, I don't I don't really have any any positive or negative to say about it it really depends on you on your company and such so either way, it doesn't help or hurt, but one way this could help is that the best comments rise to the top. And it might not even matter because you're going to be moderating your comments anyway. Um, you can browse some of these other page, uh, other, these uh, other options, but let me mention a couple, then we'll take a break here. Let me jump over here and then we'll come back a little bit. Page roles. Everyone who works on your page can have a different role depending on what they need to work on. So you can have multiple people editing the page. 
I'm not comfortable giving away my Facebook address to everyone else in the company to log in to make changes, and you shouldn't either. Everyone needs to have their own login. Again, that's why Facebook wants a person to create a personal uh, profile, and then they can manage multiple pages. And this is the screen right here. I can allow more people to manage Victor's Bakery under page rules. I put in their email address, and this assumes the person has a Facebook account. They're not going to be able to manage the page without a Facebook account. And we have these options here. Let them manage it how. We have least power to most power. Default is second most. I'm an admin, so I can do anything I want with this page, such as adding more people to manage it or removing people. So if you add someone else in the company as an administrator, they could remove you as an administrator and take it over. If you're adding a new admin, please understand they'll have the total control like you. So editor is very good for most people that you're going to add under you. They won't be able to kick you out of your own page, but they will be able to do just about everything else. Yes? Do they actually become the owner of the page, or is that one specific person? The owner would still be you as the creator, but you're giving other people the ability to, to work on it. And you can transfer ownership, admin to admin. But it would have to be the original admin owner? I'm not exactly sure. I believe it is as powerful as any admin. So if I added three more people in my company and I put them all as admin, even if I'm the owner of it, I believe the other ones as those admins can still take it away from you and put it to someone else. That's why that one is so powerful and it's not the default. You have these other levels, analyst, and it tells you here. An analyst can see which admin created a post or comment and view insights. So they can't post anything, they can't reply to people, they can just see changes have been made. Higher levels will let people create posts or ads, view insights and activity, moderator can respond or delete comments and messages, etc. So you can read that. Editor can fix the wrong address, send messages to customers, post something, create ads, etc. And then admin can do it all and even deal with more users, more moder uh, more managers. Do you know yes. if people, when you assign people to it, do you know if they know what their role is? Hmm. I'm not sure. It might, on um, the message that they get, it might tell them. And uh, I don't think it would be a big secret anyway, because if they try to do something they can't, it won't let them. It'll tell them you don't have that level. If you want to get back to that preferred page audience, there it is. When you created the page and you fill that part out that we were looking at, you can change it again here. If you already had a page and didn't create one like we did right now, you can go back to it. Although I have seen for some people that you're not able to get back to this preferred page audience for some reason. Some people don't have that access. I don't know why. The only thing I can say about that is either don't worry about it because we will see page targeting, targeting in another way, or if you really care you'll have to delete this page and create another one and then you can do preferred page audience. I wouldn't go that far because we have other things that we can do. So you've all heard of Facebook. How many of you have heard of Instagram before? And how many of you have heard that um, Facebook bought Instagram for like a billion dollars, literally? No. If you didn't hear they paid that much, Facebook, probably like two years at the most after Facebook was invented, Facebook paid a billion dollars to buy Instagram. Um, and I was on Instagram from week one, and I really liked it. And then when Facebook took over, and as I said, I'm not a fan of Facebook, I thought, that's it. Facebook is, I mean, Instagram is, is over. They're going to turn it into the next Facebook, and it's going to be bad. And I almost canceled my account. But um, I stayed with Instagram, and I was very surprised that they, they didn't really do anything. Facebook didn't impose any big changes. Facebook didn't Facebookify it. They left Instagram pretty much alone. Until very recently when they added Instagram ads. So now you're going to see ads, if not already, on Instagram. As a user, I don't like that. I don't want to see ads on Instagram. I want to see cool pictures. As a company, I love that. I'm going to reach an audience that really cares about my product by posting a very artistic photo. 
on Instagram. So we have the ability to target people on Instagram with ads. And we'll see that that's not a bad word as a company. But ads and marketing and such hand in hand, and that's how we reach an audience nowadays. So as a consumer, we may hate ads, but we, as marketers or as companies, we, we need ads, we're going to like ads, because that's how you reach an audience. Ads and, and, and marketing and, and all of that is important, because how would you have known about these classes existing? Did you drive down Aero Drive one day and say, what's in that building? And you walked in. No, you probably saw something on the radio or TV, heard something on the radio or saw something on TV or a billboard or a flyer or a card or mail. something in the mail. You got some sort of advertising. And here you are. You're learning and you're enjoying this class. So, thank you. So you want to do the same thing in social media to some degree. You're not going to become a spammer and you're not going to target... You're not going to send out a spam message to everyone that doesn't care. You're going to send out messages targeted to those that will care as accurately as possible. And Facebook lets us do that. That's why I like it as a platform for businesses, but not as a, not as a person. Yes? Are they paid Yes. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to reach as many people as we'd want without paying a little bit. And as we'll see a little bit later, you can pay as little as a dollar and reach a good amount of people with one dollar but we'll see that soon. Um, let's look at one more thing and then we'll take a break. There's a bunch of settings here and one of the important ones to, to also deal with is page info. Click on page info. That will tell you that page info has moved. They used to have it here in settings but now they've moved it over to here. We've got page messages, blah blah blah. And here we've got a timeline about photos, etc. So a sub menu right here on top of the main menu up there. So it took us simply to the about screen. It took us out of settings into about. And there's a bunch of things here that I would recommend that you fill in as much as possible. Maybe not right now. We're out, we are going to take a break though. But there's a bunch of things to fill in here. Again, to help you get found, to reach the right audience for your products, etc. Category, if you're in the wrong category, you should be able to hover over and put yourself in the right category. Yes? I, this is where I was able to change that to a capital T to give you a three day request. Oh, okay. Uh, we're here on the end. Yeah. Okay, good. So if you misspelled your company name, there's where you can fix it. Yes? Page info. Um, do you see timeline about and photos? Yes. And you have clicked on about and it doesn't work? Well, I clicked on about, I thought I was clicking on the page. Oh, I see. Yeah. But where is that display for a visitor? You've got a short description, you've got a uh, mission statement, a long description. It displays, it displays here. If a person, if a person uh, goes to my page, so if, let me show you here, if I go if I go to this page, PMD Interactive, if I go to some, someone's page, I'm going to see their posts and all of that. And if I go to their about, this is what we're filling in. All of this about info. So, like you showed us, we could pin a, a tweet. Can you pin a post? Yes. So, okay. Um, so here, about. We have to fill in topics. Choose three words to describe your page. So these are some keywords. When people search, you want that. Facebook web address, I want that. I want to have a nice simple name. Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. This unfortunately, mine says I'm going to need at least 25 likes before I can claim that name. This has been all over the place. I remember it used to be 30 likes. And then for a time it was, they took that requirement away. And then they put it back and they took it away. I don't know. And for some of you, you, you can do it right away. So it's so inconsistent. If you're able to do it, cool. It's not taking the three words. It doesn't let me save changes. Maybe you need to put commas. Okay, I'll be with you one moment. So here, I need 25 likes before I can create a web address. Maybe I will try to convince 25 friends of mine to give me a like. But it doesn't let me 
claim my name in my case until I have some more likes. That's what fans are. So I'll have to do it later. Start date. Now, if you have 15 likes on one of your other pages, are you able to merge those pages? Well, if you merge them, those likes should come through, yes. I thought you were going to say, I've got 15 likes on one here and 12 likes there. No, you have to have the 25 on one page, but you can merge them. Start date. This is just, do you want to set this as the company was founded in this year, or this page was created on that year, or my app was launched on that year? That's... I don't see too much of a purpose for this, but if you, for completeness sake, you can set the start date here down to the day. So my company was founded, I said 1881, so it does go back there, 1881, December 30th. The purpose of that, again, I don't think there's too much of a purpose, but people would see when they visit your page, the very first post will be founded, or created, or born, or whatever. An address. So if you are a business that has an address and you put one in there, what will also happen here, note, if you add a valid address, people will be able to see and check into your page using Facebook Places. So this is like when we had set up earlier local business. If I add an address here of a real place, no street address located inside another place. If I add a real address, someone on their Facebook app on their phone can search and they'll find me and it'll give them a map and they'll go to my place. And then they can check in. Have you heard of uh, checking in on Yelp or Foursquare? Facebook also has it. You're basically saying, I checked in here. I'm here. I'm at this business. And um, the purpose of this for us as marketers is that then we get statistics and demographic information to say the most popular time of day that people come to your business is 3 p.m. So that'll give me the idea to post something at 2 o'clock that says, hey, everyone, sale today at 3 p.m. Maybe when I get more people. So all this information that everyone willingly gives away to Facebook, we can use it as businesses. I wouldn't fill this in with a real address unless you have a real address. I wouldn't put my P.O. box here. Because then people can check in to a non-existent location, which is weird. Worst case scenario is if you did put a Facebook, if you did put a P.O. box and someone does drive to your business and it's a P.O. box and they're mad that it's a P.O. box instead of a real business, they can click one star. You got a one star on your review. Don't worry about Impressum because that really is only for companies in Austria, Germany, or Switzerland because this is for that disclosure that this page is run by this person this political Facebook page is run by this organization so don't worry about impress them it doesn't apply to us here unless you are doing business in those countries long description is where you get like 2,000 characters or something to write something longer I wouldn't write my whole company history here because not a lot of people are really gonna go out of their way to see it or read it it is useful to write something more here when people search, yes, but you're really going to spend more of your time actually publishing something. We can fill in all of the stuff about our words and our products and such in the long description, but it's really going to be about what we're publishing every week or two weeks or month or every day, what we're publishing on a regular basis, not this stuff as much. You can write a mission, founding date, any awards, products. This is although not really usable at all as a real sort of product inventory. You don't really have a, a way here to create, you know, um, 
price structure and photos of your products it's not at this point it's pretty worthless maybe for keywords but really you're gonna be publishing stuff more often maybe in the future they'll activate this so that you can really sell products here uh, the big companies have that ability like Macy's and uh, Best Buy I suppose but we're not that level we still have to sell our product on our website so there's not that much use here it's just a basic list of products not really about adding prices and buy now and all of that there's really no explanation it's just add your products and that's it contact phone contact email and your website and most people don't need to worry about official page if you are if you created yet another Justin Bieber fan page then you can click here to say this is a representation of the official Justin Bieber page so you don't really have to do this because you are your own company and you're of course your own representation so you don't have to fill that out so we're gonna take a break if you want to fill any of this stuff in you can need any individual help I'll help you out and when we come back we'll look at other things I recommend and then we'll start posting and then we'll start getting fans we'll start getting followers at 733 we'll be back at 743 we'll go on <laughs>